Joining me now, Brooke Goldstein, a human rights attorney and director of the Lawfare Project, and Mark Hanna, who's a partner with the Truman National Security Project and adjunct professor of media studies at the New School. So what's happening there, Brooke, is important. The, the attempt by the reporter was, are you drawing an equivalence between the Israelis and the Palestinians? And if the answer to that is yes, which is how it sounded, that is significant. Why? Because... Could you imagine a situation where, let's say, an Israeli leader, Netanyahu, goes on television repeatedly and calls for all Israelis to pick up knives and stab Palestinian children to death? Do you think the reaction of the Obama administration would be, well, all sides need to calm down and, you know, Arabs have to stop inciting Jews to violence? Absolutely not. But that is what is happening here. A moral equivalence is being drawn. There is no out condemnation of incitement to genocide and let's not mince words that is exactly what is happening Abbas is inciting genocide against the Jewish people my people and my own government the American government does not have the moral courage to stand up and say stop using American taxpayer dollars to fund school textbooks to fund television programs cartoons music videos teaching innocent Palestinian children, for example, to take their own lives as suicide bombers, teaching and inciting Palestinian people to engage in genocide. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I, Brooke and I will both agree that Israel has no stronger, stauncher friend and ally than the United States. That's why we give Israel every year $3 billion, more than $3 billion, in military aid alone. They have the Iron Dome, one of the most... Okay, check on the military front, but what about her missile defense shields. We both watched the same videos that people at home were watching. Those are horrific. They're heart-wrenching. They're, they're, they're just hideous to see what's happening to the Israeli people. Wh so why they not call out the Palestinians on it? They why are. not, do, why not are, call out Hamas? They're telling both sides. The Obama but that's administration the problem. is trying to get both sides to de-escalate, to defuse this situation. I don't see the problem with that. What do we want to happen? Do we want... Israel to retaliate in a disproportionate way. Do well, we the, want the to problem drop bombs? is that here's My the problem. My first instinct is to problem. drop bombs on who's doing that. Okay, but here's the problem. You tell me. Because kids. Hamas is a terrorist organization. Our government, our government designates them right. terrorists. That, that's right. that's who's running Palestine. And Israel is our closest ally. Those, so why is it so but, tough? Let me just say something. It's, it's not about whether or not America is Israel's best friend. It's about the bigotry of low expectations. And every time we see Muslim violence as a reaction to a perceived offense to Islam, whether it is Nobody's the reaction that. to the YouTube films, the so-called anti-Islam YouTube films, the reaction to the Mohammed cartoons, the Obama administration blames the Nobody's they never call out imams Palestine. inciting yeah. violence. They never call out the Palestinian Authority or the radical imams who are calling for death to all infidels. And by the way, that includes you too, Mark. It's not just Jews. It's all infidels. It's the bigotry sure. of low Everybody, expectations. Uh, and I think Kerry, the Obama administration, let me just say this, is decrying and denouncing violent rhetoric wherever it exists. And that comes from Palestine mostly. And they've been on the record decrying and denouncing this. But... Look, you the, don't think the, that they should be t specific in their language because what we saw recently was that right. uh, the, the Palestinian leader came out to the, to the UN right. and was very clear about the fact that they did not think they should have to abide by their prior uh, obligations, saying the Israelis have left, left us no choice. And there was a real question about whether there was going There's, to be a, a push by the, the Palestinians to go after the Israelis, and now here well, we this are. Isn't, this isn't a coordinated thing. I mean, this, this is 13 year old Palestinian kids who feel desperate, who oh, feel please. discriminated. Again, uh, it doesn't excuse what they're doing. Desperate. Let me just finish, Brooke. Stabbing I mean, innocent two-year-old children, Look, shooting my, parents my, in front of their uh, children. How many Jews have to die until we realize this isn't about they're settlement? They're dying on both it's sides. It's not about it's frustration. Not, that's not me being it's about a bloodlust, a lust for Jewish okay. blood. It's, and it existed way before the state of Israel. More Palestinians have died in the past 48 hours than Jews. So but more that's Jews not, have to die? No, um, this is exactly my point, is nobody has to die. The Obama administration, uh, Israel's like our little brother. When you see your little brother on a schoolyard fight, you don't necessarily come get his back and start beating up the little kid he's fighting with. You tell them to both chill out and take the, and, and you this get in the middle the of it. And, and this you, is real life. Real people are dying. This we is, have a bus saying it is a national duty to murder Jews. Every drop of blood spilled for Jerusalem for Allah is okay. holy. And yeah. this is the man Obama called a peacemaker. Okay, so I got to go. I got to leave it at that. I got to leave it at that. Very good debate, okay. both of you. Great Thank to see you. Megan. Coming up is the crime.